everyone, and thanks for joining us on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. All right, and today we are finishing up our Demon Boys. We are indeed, yes. I'm working on uh, Baphomet from Gale Force 9. And if I... Taller than the logo. <laughs> <laughs> and over there. I'm working on a Goristro from WizKids. Um, yes. Very cool. And today's episode is sponsored by Vallejo, so we will only be using Vallejo paints. What to you by the letter V. <laughs> I was about to say, sorry, Dave, only Vallejo for you. Oh, no. Whatever will uh, I do? Oh, I do like that that pops up. It is brought to you by the letter V. <laughs> Quite literally. Um, Don't worry, I already have my favorite Vallejo paint out. <laughs> Chard Brown. <laughs> I was going to say, is it Chard Brown? <laughs> Definitely Chard Brown. <laughs> it is excellent. Oh, Josh Potter is typing backwards. Hi, Josh. <laughs> and hi, Jacob. <laughs> so, yes, it's nice to finally uh, get back into... Back into the studio? Into the studio so we can wrap up these guys. When I walked in and I saw how big this guy was again, it was like, I... I didn't realize he was so big. I forgot. Yeah, I'm touching up my guy's shoulders because as it dried, some of the paint shrunk. Okay. And uh, kind of made my um, little ombre. <laughs> the fire ombre. <laughs> my fire ombre. <laughs> um, not quite as uh, beautiful up close. Okay. Uh, with some of that base showing through. Right. Uh, it still looks very glowy up on the screen though. So thank you to Leona and the studio for always <laughs> making everything so much prettier. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's cool. Look at that, and zooming in as well. It does zoom nice. in, I forgot about that. That's new, <laughs> kind of, the camera angles. Yep. Yeah, we're working with, with new camera angles here in the studio. A little so it's closer. Kind of, it's Come freaking me out right now. Can you see? Um, yeah, For sure. so I can still zoom, but it's <laughs> okay, just a little cool. closer now. Excellent. Uh, I think we should also say hi to uh, Dave Hummel, Andy Chesney. How you doing, Andy? Andy! Um, Tell Tegan. Uh, hi, James. Uh, hi, uh, Jason. Hi, uh, well, I said hi, Josh, hi to Josh before. And hi to <laughs> Sean. So... You can say hi twice to people. It's not against the rules. Well, I just wanted to make sure that Josh didn't think that I'd forgotten that I'd said hi to him. <laughs> that can happen sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jason is anticipating the smoke effects. I have them just off, um, just off, off camera. camera. I can bring them on. So let's see. Let's see if I can. Ha ha. So we go. if I move them, you can see the. The glitter, much better on camera, because when I move it, you can see those little embers light up on the on the top bits of the smoke, too. There's not as many, of course, because they're supposed to be very floaty up. But the glitter effect, I really like how that came out as far as embers uh, yep. in real life. It looks um, really good. looks very cool. So the smoke, I think, is all right. I would have liked to, I think I would want to try it again with uh, access to this, like the, the fill, the... Yep. The polyfill. Poly, yeah, the polyfill. Just because I think that would give more of a delicate, wispy feel. But I'm so. not dissatisfied with the cotton ball technique. I just feel like it definitely looks more like an oil slick kind of smoke. Right, yeah. Uh, something dirty. Well, <laughs> Tegan I, says she loves us both. Good. Because <laughs> I haven't excellent. seen her in what feels like years. <laughs> <laughs> it can't have been that long. I, it's definitely been over a year since but it was I have seen Unplugged. my was wife. It? No, it wasn't, uh, wasn't PAX Unplugged. I, I don't... When did I see Tegan last? I, I think it was Gen Con. I saw like Gen Con 2019. Just Sasquatching yeah. her way through I was going to say, PAX Unplugged was 2019. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. It's all 2019. Nothing happened last year. Nothing did happen last year. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. And uh, Alan Blunt is here as well. Hey, Alan. And Mike. Hi, Mike. I always like the little wave symbol that we get in the, in the chat there. <laughs> yep. When I came back in, I had to um, remember where there were scars that I'd forgotten on him. 
and one of them was along the leg here. So you can see I've just, I can't even get my finger in there. So just along the leg here, so I've gone back and painted okay up that scar. Do your best. Hmm? <laughs> so it's okay, do your best. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. And then the, uh, the one on his arm here, straight through his, uh, his forearm fur. For... And I think there is actually, yep, there's one more here that I've got to, I've got to catch on his, just up on his chest there. Looks like a bit of a bite mark, but I'm not sure what would be biting this guy. Something bigger. Something bigger? No, it's it's smaller. There's smaller teeth marks. Huh. Well, something smaller can sometimes still be just as scary as something big. True. Uh, right. Some lesser demon related to like a chihuahua. <laughs> much more scary. Demon chihuahua sounds much more terrifying. It does, doesn't it? Also, fun fact, Restream finally gave me a link to send people to be able to um, show their names on Facebook. Okay, So if great. you're watching from our Facebook group, we can see your name now. If you go up to the top um, comment, I posted the link in the chat, which is very exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> also, hello to James. And Alan says, you two are awesome. We try to we, be uh, awesome sometimes. And, and I'm awesome too. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm pretty sure that Alan meant that Gretchen and Leona are awesome. <laughs> Alan and I have met, and he knows that I am not awesome. <laughs> so, I knew exactly where that was going. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, James' comment there, uh, his pets. So, I think, uh, yeah, possibly he does have a pet that is that likes to nip at his, his little <laughs> demonic body there. Uh, Alan's asking about the reds on the palette. So on the palette at the moment, I'm going to pull it back. There we go. So we have um, Cavalry Brown, which has taken over from Burnt Red as my base <laughs> color for red, um, mainly because I ran out of Burnt Red and I had some Cavalry Brown around. Uh, and uh, this is, so Cavalry Brown is from the model color range and the other one is um, Bloody Red from the game color range. And then I'm working at the moment on his um, mouth. So I'm using uh, hexed lichen uh, f for the purple and magenta. I'll be mixing in to uh, make that tongue pop a bit. So that's what I'm uh, using here. What are you planning on painting, uh, trying to paint, Dave, hmm? for this episode? For this episode, I'm what's trying your, to... What's your goal? Uh, have him to, for him to be finished. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I get to paint. Um, so basically, I think the important things, I've got uh, his fur. So he's got lots of fur, painted, base-coated black there now. Uh, I'm going to be dry brushing it with some uh, dark sea blue, which is actually a bit greenish. It's a lot like um, coal black from the P3 range. So I'm going to have a bit of an experiment with that. I'm probably going to mix a little bit of um, ivory into that for the uh, the final highlights. Um, so I'll be using that on his uh, fur. For his uh, hooves that I still have to do, I'm going to match those to his fingernails. It seems like a pretty good, pretty reasonable thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Fashion. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's painted his fingernails. <laughs> so, um, and I'm probably going to do something similar with the uh, the bones on his, like his antlers here. He's got all these sort of crazy antlers, especially these ones that come down sort of out of his, out of his neck. Um, and I'm going to use uh, charred brown, beige brown, and ivory to work on those. And then there's the weapon. So I've base coated that in tinny tin already. And it'll just be, um, I'm probably going to go with something fairly uh, rusty and menacing. I'm not th I don't think he's in into um, spending a lot of time polishing his weapons. <laughs> That's fair. And he doesn't spend any time sort of stitching up his wounds. So chances are. That's because chicks dig scars. Pardon? 
That's because chicks dig scars. Chicks dig scars? Yeah. This is true. Or at least that's what I've been told. And uh, no, real quick from the chat before we go to Gretchen, um, I just want to say hi to some key. My mic sounds low and muffled. Sorry, I'm wearing a, a mask. <laughs> so yep. <laughs> I'll just hold the mic really close. Really <laughs> close. <laughs> Evening, Roger. Hey, Roger. And it looks like he's in dire need of a Manny Petty, your guy, Dave. Which no I doubt. I agree with. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to give it to him, just so just so you know, Josh. It's not going to be me. <laughs> so, Gretchen, what are you planning on working on this evening and trying uh, to get so done? So, last time I focused on his back and all of those little glowy, fiery bits. And then I did a quick dry brush on his front to make those abs and fur stand out. So... I think what I'm gonna do is focus on getting all of his little accessories, uh, his cuffs, and he has some more iron bits. And I think I, so I got, accidentally got a little bit of red on the tip here of these armbands. And I was like, oh right, iron turns red when it's hot. And so I think I'm gonna actually go back through and kind of intentionally redden the tips of those up because they are touching the parts of his shoulders that are uh, warm, that are fiery. And then I think I will figure out what I want to do with his horns and uh, the inside of his mouth, if I want to make that glowy or not. And then after I do that, I'm going to play around with my smoke and see if one, I can actually get it off of my sketchbook where I glued it down. And <laughs> And two, if I can then re-glue it somewhere that makes sense and looks good on this guy. Um, so I'm looking forward to that part. That's the plan. That's what I'm looking I don't want to do anything too crazy that would clash with all of the glowy effects that I spent so much time on. <laughs> um, so I probably won't do anything too intense on the front of him just so I don't take away from it. Uh, but that's the goal. That's the plan. I'm going to keep doing what I do and just wing it. <laughs> something will happen. I will have something at the end of this episode. At the end of the show, you'll have something to show for it? I yeah, Hopefully. <laughs> I think you will. And I, what think you I don't know what, but it'll be something. Uh, <laughs> what color are you using for the yellow? What color am I using for the yellow? Just to touch it up right now. Oh, to touch it up. So to touch up his shoulders, I mixed. I actually, I cheated and I asked Dave. I did not cheat. I phoned a friend. Um, <laughs> I asked Dave how to get a nice opaque yellow that wasn't going to do the same thing immediately again when it dried. And he suggested something, mixing the yellow with a bone color. So I took Vallejo's Ivory, and I took Ice Yellow, and I very carefully just went over the little bits that had the, this is gonna sound weird, but the black that is on top of everything I want, because that looks like the smoke and the top of the, uh, Embers, like a lava surface. Like lava, yeah. The cracked lava surface. Um, yeah. Whereas the black peeking through from underneath almost gives the opposite effect. Um, so I was specifically looking for the black peeking through underneath to go over with the touch-up. Cool. I don't know if that makes sense, but I wanted my underneath. If you think in layers, like you're a Photoshop artist, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> or, or if you make sandwiches. Or if you make sandwiches, yeah. You, you, I, didn't, I want... you didn't want it to be a sandwich of black and black. Yeah. Yeah. Because that would, it, it would just muddle up the, the ombre and it wouldn't make it look as glowy because the trick to glow is contrast. Yep. Um, so. <laughs> what? That's the best my brain, that's the best my brain has for you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um. All good. Also, real quick, I want to shout out 
to Betsy for joining us on Twitch. Thank you for liking the new camera setup. Cool. Hey, Betsy. Um, I do have one of your photos, so stay tuned. We will be looking <laughs> at one of them. Because, awesome. of course, I went back and found the her cool Horizon Dawn. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, That's yeah. Alan seen. says, nice concept on the heat effect, Gretchen. And someone on Facebook says, that is looking ridiculously good. I love it. Also, Facebook friend, we can now see your credentials if you go to this link that I'm putting in the chat right now. Restream can grab your information so we can know who you are. We can see but your yes, name. But yes, I'm excited to see how these guys turn out. Yeah, I am... Me too. Really excited to see how this turns out. I'm really excited to see this, how the basing with the smoke effects look. Because right. I feel that's going to look either really, really good or just okay. Um, well, you know how when you started working on them, uh -huh. I said I'm skeptical. But at the same time, I also know whenever I'm skeptical, it turns out brilliantly. Yeah, I just make, I make things happen, Dave. I, I am so not skeptical anymore. <laughs> I think it's going to look fantastic. No, gonna... now it's going to look awful. You started believing in me and ruined it. <sighs> Man, I can't catch a break here. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's going to be fine. It's going to look great. Also, Josh Potter says, Garistro makes great sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> is it his bistro? The food is great. <laughs> exactly. But the service is infernal. <laughs> the, Are you nice. telling me this does not look like the man who would make an excellent panini? <laughs> he would just smush it between his hands. <laughs> great service. Good stuff. I, I don't think I've ever told you guys the story about how in uh, 2000, I went to New Caledonia for a week. Not on vacation for work. I was working for Games Workshop at the time. But um, we were invited to a, um, like a model expo. Uh, so a, a local um, scale model club on, um, in Noumea, the capital of um, New Caledonia. Um, they, every two years they'd run this uh, model expo and they'd invite somebody over from Australia. This is about three and a half hours flight. Mm -hmm. um, so myself and one of my friends, Laurie, uh, we got to go over and um, run painting classes using um, acrylic paints. Most of the folks on the island had only used enamel paints. <laughs> and uh, also run uh, demo games of Games Workshop games. So Warhammer and uh, Warhammer 40,000. The uh, main language in uh, New Caledonia is French. And neither um, Laurie nor I spoke French. So it, running a demo game oh, no. of Warhammer 40,000 is a little bit tough. Um, but there were, were times where, where Laurie came up with the idea. He was looking, one of the um, Space Marines was equipped with a flamer. And he said, um, he was trying to explain what it did, like there was a, like a big flamethrower. But in the end, it came down to um, that basically the, the dark Eldar were paninis. <laughs> and the, the flamethrower was the panini maker. So it was a, uh, it is um, the things, the things you got to do. That's hilarious. To, Communicate. To work it and as soon as he said that, it's like they were like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> You're speaking our language, food. Yep. Exactly. Food is the language for so many people. <laughs> yep. Well, the funny thing was, like paninis were the things that we could find, like near to the uh, exhibition hall. So. Also, welcome to Fuerte Forte from Twitch. Thanks for joining us. Excellent. Now that we've started, Gretchen and Dave have settled in. Let us know what you guys are uh, painting this um, evening, if you're painting along with us, or uh, 
what you have been working on, we'd love to know. That would be or great. Or if you've eaten a panini lately. <laughs> <laughs> or what your favorite panini is. Not, I'm. I think I'd go fairly simple, like, like a ham and cheese. Is a Cuban considered a panini? Because they like smash it. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably, it's, it's an Impanini family. It's, right, like it's in the <laughs> Panini family, right? <laughs> when does something that is toasted on either side and smushed stop becoming a Panini? <laughs> oh, gosh. I think when it's, there's a certain thickness. Now it's philosophical. Like, that, that's <laughs> yeah, for me, I love, the, I love a Cuban too. So right. that's my favorite Panini. I think it stops, it stops being a panini when it's not on the panini list on the menu. <laughs> then it's just squished sandwich. So this is coming out pretty well. Initially when I um, put the dark sea blue, the dark sea blue uh, on there, it was too dark. It wasn't getting enough contrast. But I think this is just enough. It looks pretty light on the... Um, I'm just going to move my palette into shot. There we go. So it looks quite light there, but that's just mixing in some uh, ivory with the dark sea blue. You see it pretty quickly goes to that light. Ah! My goodness. I'm just going to put it there and Leona can find it with the camera. <laughs> that big act, a big cleaver of his and getting in the way again. Because this, this texture is so deep, I can just do a nice um, sort of run over the top of it with the um, with a brush and it still looks like, still looks black. Yeah. So it's really nice. If that texture was a lot more shallow, then uh, I'd have to be a lot more careful, I think. So this is kind of overbrushing because my, my brush has still got quite a lot of paint on it. And for those of you who may have not seen the uh, first episode, these were primed in black. Yep. And we've just been working, working up from there. But I think that's, um, that's coming along really easily. Hooray! <laughs> It means I'll be able to spend a little bit more time on his uh, his sword cleaver thing. Really good. But, uh, I'm just trying to slap this color on so I can clean it up. Sorry, what do we got? Uh, who's working on what? Uh, Dave's working on uh, 40k Space Marine Sergeant Kronos. Okay, so that's a uh, guy who's going to be riding in his tank. I think one of his uh, one of the tanks that Dave's been working on. Oh, that's cool. Um, we've got uh, Fuerte Forte says, loves a Cuban, Cuban sandwich. Uh, Jason's working on a little basilisk currently. Be careful, don't look it directly in the eyes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jason is asking, uh, are you overbrushing? Yes, yes, I am actually overbrushing there. So just got that paintbrush nice and flat. I think you can, if I turn it on its side there, you can see... It's more and of a wedge now. Just basically means you're piling on. It's it's kind of like dry brushing without taking a lot of the paint off. Oh, okay. So it's still that same sort of action. I can just brush it across. Yes. The um, piece. Let me let's see up here. So I'm just doing that. So the paint's catching on there, but I haven't taken a lot of the paint off the the brush. Gotcha. So because I'm using a small brush um, here, okay. it, it can be uh, quite controlled. Um, if I was to use a larger brush, something like this, um, I probably wouldn't overbrush on this. I would have gone and through to the dry brush. But because a lot of it runs up right against the, uh, the red here, I didn't want to have any... Um, spillage? Spillage, yeah any contamination between the two. Looks like Roger Moore is sh has shifted to After the Empire. 
touched on some more monumental, but we'll not go back until I finish after the Empire. Okay. Right, yeah. That's fair. That'd be good. Uh, yeah, I think Roger's posted a couple of uh, castles in the group recently. Yes. Which look very That's cool. That's the one that I grabbed for. Okay, excellent. Our viewing. Uh, Alan is attempting to finish the 12 iconic characters of the Reaper Pathfinder miniatures. Oh, very cool. By June, you've got plenty of time. You could spend a whole week on one and still have time. June? Yep. So far away. That's one... One... Hmm? <laughs> Let's do the math, everyone. I'm just joking. I did. You did? Oh, I, I did, didn't I did hear math. you. <laughs> That's one, one a week. One a one week. week. Got Between that. now and June. It'll be all good. Fuerte Forte is finished up a human soldier for Starfinder. Cool. Oh, like are you playing a game? That's cool. Starfinder is like one of the few RPGs I've actually played. <laughs> right. Okay. What uh, what character did you play? What character class? I played. Oh gosh, it's been a <laughs> while. Sorry. Um, I played like. There's not really magic in the universe, but I played the most magic class that you could, and then okay. um, I was like a little rat person. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Becky, no Betsy. Sorry. Betsy. Sorry, Betsy. Betsy got an airbrush last week. Ooh, so she's I been going back and forth between practicing Zenithal priming and continuing work on the Horizon Zero Dawn grazers. Cool. Excellent. What were you saying, Gretchen, about your... I, was say, I still have to put all my airbrush things together. <laughs> right. My, my office right now has been overtaken by my cat. Um, so it's kind of a disaster. Dope. But that's fine. I noticed on uh, Facebook today that uh, our friends at uh, Com Competition Minis over in Towson, which are very close to the studio, they are uh, having uh, we're having a bit of a sale, and one of the items that they had on sale was the um, Badger Patriot 105 airbrush. Oh. And I was like, I've really run my airbrush into the ground, so I need to... Um, Grab another one. Oh, of course. I just realized. <laughs> so I import sport a um an airbrush today. As well as replacement needle and replace replacement tip for my existing one, which is the Badger Renegade Chrome. So I'm kind of excited to get to do a little bit more airbrushing soon. That would be good. James was asking, uh, what airbrush do you recommend? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't, I don't know enough about airbrushes to, um, be able to definitively recommend any. Um, I've used a uh, Badger Renegade Chrome um, because I got it from a friend um, four or five years ago, I think. Um, I've also sort of hung out at the Badger booth a couple of times at different shows like Gen Con and Adepticon. Uh, those folks are out of Wisconsin, so they're here in the U.S. Um, Iwata are... Uh, I believe reasonably popular. Um, there's a German company called uh, Harder and Steenbeck, who do very um, precise airbrushes. So once you're um, once you've built up to being an airbrush whiz, the Harder and Steenbeck ones are good ones to look at. So yeah, probably somewhere in that range. Badger, Iwata. Um, Potter and Steenbeck. Grex. Grex are another one to take a look at. Grex have a, um, their brushes have a, like a trigger rather than 
the nozzle, not the nozzle, rather than the little trigger up the top. They have like a pistol grip. So sometimes those can be, some people um, have, uh, can have issues with holding that, the airbrush and using the trigger. I should do that on camera. Here we go. So can have uh, trouble with doing that. So the pistol grip where you uh, can use that to control the airflow uh, can definitely help. So they're worth checking out if you um, might have some carpal tunnel issues. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what um, what airbrush did uh, Betsy get? Oh, that oh she got the Badger 105. Cool. So but yeah, uh, Betsy also says basic priming is much easier than she thought. Definitely with the with the airbrush for sure. Um, Mike says he's working on a swamp hydra and some ice frogs, and a giant toad, but ice themed. Cannot wait to see what a swamp hydra looks like. <laughs> Posted a work in progress on the group today. I think it was this morning. I could be wrong. But, so it was uh, probably while I was at other work. Hmm? <laughs> so it was probably while I was at other. Probably work. while you're at other your other job. Exactly. But uh, yeah, definitely cool. Um, uh, well, it's just starting out with airbrushes, so just getting the Master Series. They're very good starter airbrushes and have an inexpensive entry price compared to the bigger names Dave mentioned. Thumbs up. There we go. And Badger did a really great video on YouTube on airbrush and equipment basics. So. That is would be a good one to check out as well. Okay, he's looking all right now. I just uh, get a little bit more ivory out, and <laughs> there we go. Just do some final uh, overbrushing highlights on the the fur. Which bits are you working on at the moment, Gretchen? Uh, so I did a base coat with um, gunmetal and uh, what was it? basalt gray. Okay. And then I'm going back over on the bits that are touching the hot parts. Right here. On his armbands. Oh, and cool. And I am uh, letting them reflect the fact that they're hot. <laughs> right. So I have some uh, which what, black red and flat red. And at the very tips where it's touching, I have it the hottest kind of polka red with the flat red. And then okay. um, I blended it down towards the um, iron uh, band with a little bit of the basalt gray. Okay. Uh, so that it was uh, a gradual kind of... We're heavy on the blending with this one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Lots of blending. But I tried to keep it focused on where that band would be touching the hottest parts of him. So yep. they're not perfectly symmetrical. Um, and then I cleaned up around the other bits of his metal. And now I'm going to figure out... Uh, what I want the inside of his mouth to look like. Um, or if I want to do more details on his horns. I dry brushed them and then I made them plain black because I didn't like, I felt like the dry brush looked too much like the uh, fur texture. Yeah. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that. But ideas from the chat, you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to kind of put your opinion out there. I was thinking about making his mouth kind of glowy to tie it in with the rest of him. Right. Since he doesn't have a whole lot of glowing on the front, but I don't want it to be, like, overwhelmingly glowy. I think it'd be good. It just reinforces that but he's burning from the inside kind of yeah. uh, feel. The fire is coming from inside the demon. <laughs> 
calls coming from inside the house. So, I'll try it out. We'll do that. That's fine. And then I'll try to pry my, my um, smoke up. <laughs> and yeah. see if I can do that. I Josh Potter says, what if his horns were bronze? Ooh. Bronze could be Maybe interesting. Maybe even glowing palms, too? Ooh, glowing also, palms hello, Seth. would be interesting. Hey, Seth. Thanks for joining. And yeah. yes, I agree. A glowing mouth would look awesome. So that's definitely number one on the list. Do you paint more for table ready play or do you usually try for more for competition quality Ooh. question from the chat uh for me um i i used to do both i used to paint um miniatures for competition not a lot i've got to, got to be honest um but most of my stuff that i paint or have painted in the past has been to play with so table top quality for that but as I've gotten older I'm so old now um, I uh, ancient being hmm? is that an ancient being <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, I really just I just paint to, to one level which is level I'm really happy with uh, I've never approach. been in a competition. Um, <laughs> I started painting minis because um, Rick, uh, who used to be a host on this show, uh, interviewed me for a job in the office and then said, you're going to paint minis! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Here, come give this a go. Come give this a try. Um, but I, I played D&D &D previously, so it was really fun, and, um, I also did a bunch of art stuff in school, and, uh, so I just started, like, getting this lovely little collection of game minis, um, since I don't do competitions, they are pretty much all for whatever games happen to come across. Sometimes I give them away, sometimes I have friends that I have in mind when I'm painting the minis on the show, um, because I know they have a game going with something, uh, and sometimes I just like keeping them because they're cool, and one day I will find a purpose for them, because <laughs> they're cool. cool. <laughs> um, like your rainbow dragon? Like my rainbow dragon, my rainbow fish dragon, I have a game in my brain that one day I will... Play. <laughs> One, day. One day I will I will uh, I will GM a game with the Rainbow Fish Dragon. Um, probably when it's not a pandemic. <laughs> probably. Uh, that would be good. What? I, I can't don't know. Help when you, you said probably, it probably. struck me very funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's fine. Well, it's like if you haven't done it yet during this pandemic. Exactly. Chances are it's going to be not during a pandemic. <laughs> because well, yeah. I've been a good nugget and kind of trying to not uh, go out and about. Maybe you can yeah. do like a maybe it can be a LARP situation, <laughs> and then you have to find the. Mini. Have to find the rainbow fish dragon? Find the rainbow fish dragon, yes. In the forest? Yes. In a yeah. stream? Because see, uh, now it's, it's all safe. On a rock. Fish. On a rock in the middle of the stream. <laughs> it has to be in the ocean. It's where rainbow fish is from. Jeez, Dave, get it right. Know your childhood stories. I'm just thinking of things that you could actually do. <laughs> with, rather with than. I'm to save up to buy a boat to take it out into the middle of the ocean. Uh, I'm trying to help you here. Why do you assume that I don't know anyone with a boat? I don't know anyone with a boat, so that's why. Multiple people. <laughs> My dad has a boat, but he's in Australia. Obviously, we have to go play D&D in Australia boat? to make this happen. Here. 
Congrats. It's a fairly small boat, and oh, by okay. boat I mean, yeah, it, it's a boat. Like the difference, apparently, the difference between a ship and a boat is that you can put a boat on a ship, but you can't put a ship on a boat. Oh, I like that. Is that the difference? So if if the if the vessel carries other vessels, it's, then a, it's ship. a ship. Yep. Nice. That's cool. So. Yes. I was really excited when I found that out. You might be able to tell by the <laughs> excitement in my voice. But yeah. I don't know, but if you know somebody with a boat. Sounds like a plan. Some key says, You don't like sailing, Dave? What's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> all the <a> boot. <laughs> a boat. Yes. That's funny. That is funny. I don't mind sailing. It's nice to watch other people do it. <laughs> What's that? Does a lifeboat count? Yes, does a lifeboat count on a... Well, so you, you, you wouldn't and call actually, it a... You wouldn't call it, it a life ship? You wouldn't call it a life ship, would you? I, I And I think... Yeah. Like, are, is... Oh, does somebody own saying, lifeboat? Does a lifeboat count as a boat that's a vessel that you would well, carry on a ship? And I would say yes. Yeah, yeah. You're going to need a bigger boat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, just wondering how highlighted I should go with these hooves. I should keep them fairly dark. Or you could make them really shiny. Pardon? I said, or you could make them really shiny. But really shiny hooves? Yeah, really yeah. shiny hooves. Okay. Is that a, like a horse thing or a demonic thing? <laughs> that was a popped into my head thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> For a second there, I was like, I, I didn't realize. There's acres of uh, demonic lore I don't know anything about. Shiny hooves, okay. Actually, it won't, they won't be too shiny because on the... He's sort of skidding on the ground. He'll have kicked up a lot of dust. So. I think we'll, uh, we'll keep them fairly dull. It's coming along there. Looking good. Oh, I just realized we haven't, uh, haven't looked at the minis yet from the, the group. We've been too excited. We should, uh. Real quick, um. Shout out to Josh Potter's pun. It behooves you to make them shiny, Dave. Good stuff. Yeah. Hello, Brad. Thanks for joining. <laughs> hey, Brad. <laughs> cool. Okay, so now we are going to look at miniatures from the Facebook group, which you Excellent. can also, also submit through Twitch. There's a link on the Twitch if you don't have a Facebook and you'd like to still see your Mooney up here. And same with the uh, YouTube, yeah? Yes. I need to put it on the YouTube, but yes, I will do that okay. <laughs> today. We are, no, we'll put it on the YouTube. Sorry. No, I didn't right. mean to call you out on I that. I keep forgetting. But yes, we look at miniatures because we're all about community and talking about mini painting. And it's super fun. That's what we're going to do right now. Excellent. So first we have Aaron Berg, who Aaron oh, is cool. a new member of our group. Yep. Welcome, welcome, Aaron. They're painting the, uh, the heroes from Massive Darkness. They look fun. They do. They do look fun, don't they? My favorite, of course, is the barbarian in the middle there. <laughs> with a huge axe and just the... Just got the fantastic sort of exaggerated everything. Exaggerated pose, exaggerated grimace <laughs> on his face. Um... But yeah, looking uh, looking really nice there, Aaron. I think Aaron was saying that he's been painting for, I think he's been painting for a month or two. Oh wow! I'm pretty sure. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, come along really well. Looking good there. And I'm, uh, yeah. Also liking the highlighting on the the wizard there. That's cool. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Ayumi uh, has painted up some. Um, some new bases for 
more of her um, Monster Apocalypse stuff from uh, Private Press. The absolutely crazy reflected light rainbow stained Pretty. glass wondrous thing. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I don't have proper words. For yeah, these are amazing. Is. I was going to say all of those things. All of those things I'm that sorry, Gretchen I just said. But uh, no, they're looking looking absolutely fantastic. I mean, the minis look great and the bases look great. Um, super cool. Uh, but yeah, so they're finished bases from tonight's stream. So Ayumi uh, does a Twitch stream. And I think you asked the question in the group. Yep. Um, Once I so, get that info, we can shout it out. <laughs> fantastic. Okay, that'd be really cool. So we can uh, show everybody more of, uh, or Ayumi can show everybody more of uh, super cool basing stuff as well as a fantastic painting. So yeah, awesome stuff, Ayumi. Here we go, Betsy. You knew it was coming. Uh, completed the Sawtooth from Horizon Zero Dawn this week. How cool is that? That is really nifty. Yep. It's Good. amazing. I love this model. <laughs> I, love it in, I love that it's like, in a virtual world, and now it's here, right there. It's amazing. <laughs> I, love, I think that's why I love these models. They're so good. Right. Yeah. They are awesome. And uh, I really love the work that Betsy's done on this one as well. It's got that, um, I, mean, I haven't played the game at all, so I have no idea about the whether these colors are spot on to the game or... Um, right. I think that's they're cool. almost exact, yeah. Okay. Uh, so does this does this model uh, does this thing also fly? You know, I can't because they remember. look kind of like like wasp wings, with the black and the yellow. Betsy, the tell us, there. do these fly? I don't remember. I can't remember, but uh, well, I don't know. Is my answer, um, but yeah, looking really cool. I love that, uh, like the bluish tint to the metal, yeah. and then the uh, the orange and orangey browns in there. Looking very cool. Nice work, Betsy. They look great. Oh, Brad has painted more uh, ether field minis. This one's kind of. Pardon? What was that, Leona? No flying. Those those guys do not fly. Oh, okay, no flying. Right here. Sorry. The, these, <laughs> these do not fly. Radio. Which I thought they didn't, yeah. Okay. But, uh, yeah, this mini is, is kind of crazy. It's I didn't very see this spooky. One. Yeah, it is. It's a in a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> An inner shelf, is it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, because it's, uh, so I'm, those are arms coming out, right? Yeah. Coming out from a, um, a torso on the top of a chest of drawers. Is kind of what it looks like, but um, I'm getting carried away by the mini. I should be looking at the paint job. <laughs> the paint job looks very cool. I like the highlighting on the uh, like the scarf and the uh, the purple bits of fabric around. What is it like a haunted fabric around, I think? set hmm? of drawers? Is it is it like ha a haunted? It looks like a like a haunted chest of drawers. Yeah, yeah. like a chest of drawers you'd see in a like a Japanese horror film. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Very much so. It definitely has that feel, but no, no, the painting's uh, painting's great, Brad. It was really nice, and I love the uh, the super fine details on the the face paint too. Yeah, very nice. Let's have a look at uh, more photos of that. But uh, Callie O'Malley painted him up like a poison tree frog. I really like that. It is super cool, isn't it? <laughs> I like how he looks shiny, almost like the. Like glistening. Yes. Right. Yeah, that uh, that like frog, frog should. Frog glisten going on. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely cool. So let's say, um, so translucent blue, there perhaps. Actually, but uh, yeah, looking very cool. I love the uh, that patterning on there. Great job, Callie. Very nice. Oh. Chris Hood paint up Kingdom Death Monster Rogue. Yep. Looking very good there. I love the hair. 
like the, the sculpt of the hair is great, and I but I think the color is very cool. I like that. So that's sort of whenever you like when you're reading a fantasy novel and they describe blonde hair, it's like <laughs> straw colored. Yeah, it's got that very much a straw kind of feel to it. I think. But yeah, looking really good, Chris. Coming on nicely. Oh, that's cool. All good. Um, <laughs> Clive posted uh, this is uh, halfling, um, undead halfling archer, I think. Um, yeah, so I included yep. this because we had talked about it on the previous show. And yep. then he had actually gone back and, like, we suggested he should come out of a grave. Yep. So, and there Clive he is. Gave it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, looking very cool. Very cool. And he's got some of the, um, you see in the, just behind there, that's the, the green ink from uh, the army painter that he's just <laughs> yeah. popped onto, uh, onto some of those stones there. So I guess that's the decaying body, as the decaying flesh of the, the halfling as it's risen up and sloughed out over those stones. But yeah, looking very cool, Clive. Nice job. Oh, Coronado miniature painting. The limited color palette challenge. So this one, this was painted with um, a red, a blue, a yellow, a black, and a white. Those five colors. Proof that if you know how to mix, yep. you will never be without the colors as long as you have the basics. So I think at some stage, we'll have to do this. We'll have to do that. The, I'm all for it. I already did that in college. I know Let's you will go. crush it. You will crush it. I'll be like, I'll be here going. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I might still have my like ten year old <laughs> like syllabus that says the exact colors <laughs> I was stuck with: uh, ultramarine, Excellent. blue, burnt sienna, uh, sienna, dark umber, like. Yep. Some kind of red, which was like the saddest color red to the mix saddest with. red. <laughs> I, I don't even know. Nice. But yeah, I think um Joel did a fantastic um job here. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have guessed it was just five colours. I would have uh had a few more because if you look at the blue on the pants, mm -hmm. it's different from the blue in the hat. So it's well, taking the time to mix a different base colour from those Four colors. I think the blue in the pants is the base, is the is the original blue from the challenge. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just fantastic work all around. Really nice work. Oh wow! Look at that. Super cool. So this is a um, Star Wars uh, armada. armada. It's yeah. armada. Yeah. Trust me, I know what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's <laughs> Excellent. But uh, yeah, very nice, uh, nice job here, Joel. And going along and painting all of those panel lines would have been a real pain. Well, it does have the sculpt. Um, yeah, it does have like the crevices. The yeah, so yeah. you could have a little bit of help. <laughs> it's a, knowing that, knowing where the line is, it's it's like giving you a piece of like lined paper and saying, okay. Yeah. It's like draw a line along this line and don't <laughs> deviate from it at all. We're not mechanical beings. We're humans. We're fallible. But uh, Dave's done a great job here, I think. Um, and that orange, the reddish orange in there, just um, really pops. Nice work. Oh, Dave Hummel. Repairs and touch-ups completed. Oh, and the, the Sanguinor, I think. Is that right? Is that right, Dave? Dave's in the chat. Um, pardon me. I think, I'm pretty sure that's called the Sanguinor uh, from the Blood Angels army. But uh, looking fantastic. That gold is awesome. And I think uh, that super shiny silver blade there um, is a great, great contrast against the, against the gold. But yeah, nice one. Looks cool. Oh, yep, excellent. It is the Sanguinor. Very nice. Cool. Chris Gorka painted up uh, Crystal. It's a really great job with that yellow. Yeah. It yep. has like a fabric. Yeah, it does have that, um, that feel. The 
the way it comes around that like her left thigh there and then hits the seam and goes into the shadow. I think everything just you're exactly right. The, the sculpt is great, but I think Chris's treatment of the yellow is really very cool there. Or warm. Very warm there. <laughs> I don't know. There's 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 fire and there's water. There's water as well. Yeah, there's yeah. there's multiple things going on <laughs> there in that sculpt. Yeah, but I think uh, yeah, definitely looks really cool, Chris. Nice work. Excellent. Oh, Jason. We've got uh, your know, Ogre Smasher from Reaper Bones. <laughs> so Jason was saying on this one, I think that. Um, this is the first, this is one of the ones that he used, done some zenithal priming on. Yeah. Um, that we saw in last week's show. Uh, but that uh, he didn't really see, it didn't really impact his painting too much. So um, with that, I think probably in, in a future episode, maybe when we, maybe when we do the limited color palette, <laughs> limited palette challenge, um, we can use some uh, zenithal primed, Minis, and we show you, can show you a few ways to um, to get more out of your to use that to improve your highlight shading and highlights, or knowing where to put the shading and highlights. Um, but yeah, I think this guy's looking really cool. I'm loving your shading already on the uh, the face and the highlights there, and also on that the shoulder of the arm that he's got out. So he's got that arm extended. You can see that shading that comes right underneath whatever that muscle is. What's that muscle there? Muscly muscle. Hmm? That's not a bicep. Bicep is here. Bicep. Tricep. Triceps are on the back. Yeah, triceps are on the back. But don't is they this, wrap around? Like your underneath? rotator cuff is in there somewhere, but then if you're deltoid. Deltoid. These are all I these are all muscle names I've heard. Glutamus, <laughs> ma Glutamus maximus. I've heard of that muscle name as well. I'll look it up. I be cool. don't name yeah. my muscles. I just <laughs> use them. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, Jason's done a good, uh, very good job here, painting up this guy. Um, he also mentioned uh, he was a little bit worried that the um, reindeer moss that he's got on the base there, that's the like the bright green um, mosses uh, that he picked up from the hobby section in a uh, Walmart. He was worried that it was going to turn brown. And I think that why when would it's it have turned brown. Hmm? So why would it have turned brown? Or you would worry that it's going over time will turn brown. Oh, I but, thought it, I thought they just dyed them. I don't. Yeah, I don't know how no, many that, of this were. I <laughs> just assumed if you buy it a color, it stayed that. It color. stayed the color. Um, <laughs> I think these this particular stuff, the the reindeer moss. I'm pretty sure they do dye it those particular colors. But the uh, the only thing is that, that over time it will dry. It will dry out, but I think it'll still stay that green. So it might shrink a little bit. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I think it'll. Yeah, I, it, basically, I'd let him know exactly the same thing. If he bought it from a hobby store, it would be dyed. If he went out and picked it himself, not dyed. So. Well, then, I, then it's like living. I feel like so it's. Yeah. But no, I think um, yeah, done a great job on this, Jason. Looks cool. And JT painted uh, Death Project Death Shroud complete. Ooh. He's looking very cool. I can't remember, was a it? nice green. Yeah, yeah, that green is very cool. It's nice and desaturated, but it's got enough yellow in there to not be kind of washed out. Yeah. So. We saw some Death Shroud last week. Yeah, I was just about to ask, is this, um, was it JT's work? No, it was someone else because they had painted the shroud black and their face oh, was black. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. I remember now. Really cool. So Look everybody's great. painting Death Shroud. Yeah. I say everybody, that's like three of us. It's what all the cool kids are doing. It is what the cool kids are doing. Yeah. In the <laughs> but no. painting world, it only takes a few for it to be everyone. For it to be everyone? Are you saying that it's a small hobby? I'm saying, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Oh, you're wrong. Wrong! Um, but no, these are, uh, these are looking very cool, JT. Very cool. And I'm uh, liking the, the smoke as well that you've got coming out of the tops there. That's actually sculpted in like it's plastic That's pieces really cool. that are coming out there. But um, yeah, you've done a good job um, 
painting those up as well. Looking cool. Nice work. Awesome. Well, that is all we are going to look at for now. We will look at a couple more towards the end of the show. Excellent. But, uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm going to surgery. I'm going to jump to Gretchen, and um, unless you don't want me to. What? Do you want me to jump to you or Dave to talk about what you're trying oh, to I do? Oh, I just I just finished popping the last one out. Oh, awesome. Did they, did they come off fairly easily? or? Yeah, so what I did was when I did the, the base where all the embers are that you can see with my glitter glue, uh, even though I didn't originally want it to be glitter glue because I wanted to be able to control a little bit better where I put my embers on my smoke, because um, I do have some that actually, like, if I turn it on this side maybe, yeah, that actually track up and kind of wisp away with the smoke up here at the top as well. Um, but I also wanted them at the bottom so that it seemed like it was smoldering. And because I knew I would have to pop it up out of my sketchbook, I did a lot at the bottom and did a base coat of black paint so that it would create this little base of space for me to be able to glue it and then I can just go over and paint the edges to blend in since everything is already black. Cool. Um, I thought that would give me a little bit more leeway, but I have I have a bunch of different shapes. If I, if I scooch the things over um, to play with here. I don't know if you can see them. I can't see them. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I should be putting um, Here. So you can kind of see, I could kind of do something like this, where it would be coming off the back of, uh, too high, too high, just right. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> but I could do something like this, where it would look like it was coming off the back of his foot, like maybe he's running and he's heated up. Or I could, uh, because it's paper, I can bend it. So I can make it look like it's coming off the back of him, maybe. That would fit right there on his lat. I know what that's called. <laughs> um, but I think that would be too small. I think that would look kind of odd. Or I could, I have four of these, so I could have his hands actually smoking um, with these smaller ones. And I can cut that smaller, too. Um, and kind of make his hands look like they're smoking. I also have ones that are twirly. I just, I just put the fire there. Um, again, ignore the white because that's all going to be painted black. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like just having it maybe on his that you can't see that. I got like on his footsteps? Yeah, like on his footsteps will be the most like efficient and yep. the least like cluttery. Um, there we go. So, and I started up some glowy effects on the inside of his palms. Um, but those all need to be blended outwards. Um, so. Cool. I don't know, guys. I kind of like the smaller ones more. Kind of feel like those look more smoky. I feel like if people have ideas, they should put them in the chat. <laughs> yeah, put them yep. in the chat so I can figure out what I'm doing. Jason Let says it might be cool if his fire is leaking onto the ground around him, which is kind of what you were doing just now. Yep. So do you, um, with that, Jason, do you mean if, um, like, some of it, it's sort of next to his foot, next to the, like, the hoof there, and then the fire is coming down, like, from... So we're seeing some fire on his hoof, do you think? Or... Well, no, no not necessarily like that, but if it was, I mean, like, right up against it, but... But just like you're um, putting it into the palms, if you were to paint that onto that section of the hoof, so it's kind of like dripping off him. Is that what you meant, Jason, or did oh, you mean? Oh, that would be cool. Going closer. All right. Cracked ground. Like a hat. He is walking over. You know. Cracked ground. 
at his footprints. Really? Yeah. I could do <laughs> more like cracked ground. I could. Actually, I'm kind of really glad that I did it on paper now so I can just putz around with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, could be really good for Roger Moore thing. says it looks awesome, Gretchen. What? Roger says it looks awesome. Woohoo! It does uh, look really cool. Yep. But, yeah, so put some ideas. See another one as footprints? Yeah. Kind of like the idea of keeping it down here so that it all brings your eye up. Yep. I think that's cool. Something like that. If you were to um, paint, paint it like paint the base like cracked ground, yeah. and paint like paint in some of the same sort of fire, having that that lava feel. So he's walking over a lava field, but it cracks. The cracks link the the points where you glue them on the base. You know what I mean? I get what you mean. I get cool. what you're putting down. Sweet. I think that would be cool. Because I think for that, yeah, exactly that that reason, you'll have that, um, just adding that extra dimension to it. You're really putting him in his setting. Good stuff. Yep. Oh, yeah, and his mouth looks nice. good, too. What? His mouth, mouth looks, looks good. Cool. Yeah. He's all angry. Yeah, if his insides are like lava, I can imagine it dripping from him. And then onto the ground. Yeah, that's kind of a cool idea. His breath is stinky. <laughs> Very it's like sulfur. rotten eggs. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> sulfur. Gotta love it. Cool. So um, I'm going to pop over to Dave to see what he's going to be doing for the next bit. Let's see where the... Oh, there we go. Yep, just painting the uh, his teeth at the moment. Going for a fairly traditional slash classic tooth color. In there, so. so much detail in this model. Everything's really crisp, which is nice. Really nice. So it's very easy to to get in there and highlight these uh, these teeth up. Just like that. I think it's looking uh, that bone against the um, the purple. It's looking pretty cool as well. The um, on the, the antler rack up the top here, um, it has a lot of very um, sort of bold swirls and textural pieces there that aren't um, in any sort of symmetry, particular symmetry. There's a slight symmetry, but um, a lot of the swirls aren't there. So I just went um, fairly quick over those Highlighting them up. I think if I wanted to take probably, you'd probably spend about half an hour or an hour going through and highlighting all those carefully. But I knew I didn't have time. <laughs> so I still have his uh, big cleaver to do. I want to make sure I get that done. So. Cool. So I've nice. working on that. I think, um, so that, well, that's the other thing. I've got to work out what color to do his eyes. What color should I do his eyes? Should they be glowing? Hmm. I think, I think that's well, a good black. idea with demons. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Should you Thoughts? make the tongue the highlight? Like, should he just kind of have small eyes so that the tongue is the thing you look at? The focus. I don't know. Green and glowy. Orange? Green and glowy. Orange. Orange? 
Porta. These are some of the things I was thinking of. What's uh, what does everybody else think? Let's get some uh, some other thoughts. It's okay. Sorry, I can go to this. Oh, Mel. It's like 1 a.m. in the UK. Mel, hi. Yep. <laughs> How are Thanks you doing? Thanks for stopping by. We're painting some demons. Demons. Oh, yes. So. And some key, shout out to some key. The devil is in the details. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. Cool. So, Gretchen, you kind of decided you're going to do the lava. I think I'm going to go with the lava. Um, I think that's going to give me some things to play with. And I have his, his palms kind of drying a little bit. Kind of looks like he's just starting up some kind of attack thing. I don't know if I'll keep the palms glowing or not. I don't know. The, the paint keeps seeping into the, the muscles on his palms. The meat, the hand meat. <laughs> Real quick, um, bye James. Thanks for joining us. Oh, bye James. Bye James. Get some uh, sleep. And I don't know how I like that. Um. Um. Sorry, just quickly. Uh, Jason asked, "Was his horn broken in the sculpt, or was that a happy accident?" Uh, if you're talking about this guy, those horns—that's how the how everything comes. So yeah, it's all broken and busted up. Probably happened at the same time as a lot of these other injuries. I'm thinking, but yeah, it definitely does look good. So Gretchen, you said the color on his palms is the black is bleeding through. Um, so, yeah, well, the, it's not quite as opaque. It's more difficult for me to blend on the palms because of the shape, because all of the paint wants to pool. Oh. And I have to layer it a lot to get that opaqueness, to gotcha. get the same kind of glowy effect. So if I had, like, all the time in the world, I could do it. Right. But if I want to get it done for the show, I don't have enough time to wait for the layers of paint to... Um, dry. So I think I might yep. just cover them in black and be like, uh, say lovey. Um, what, what were the colors that you ended up using for the mouth? For the mouth, the same colors I used for the other ones. So I have flat red, ice yellow, um, ivory, and orange fire. Nice. Uh, and I'm doing the same kind of thing for the bottom. And just being real fluid, I guess, because I want it to look very natural and fiery. And then I'm going to go back over it uh, with the black and dry brush, all of the crackly bits. Uh, and then we'll add some fire ember tough things. Smoke. <laughs> we'll add smoke. We'll make it happen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Wait, so that wasn't just that monitor? That was everything? Yeah. <laughs> we went dark. We're back. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> cool. Okay, so what I'm going to mess around with now is... I'm... Fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> Fade to black. <laughs> I'm going to mess around with some um, stippling on the um on his weapon yeah mm -hmm. so i'm gonna i've started with uh tinny tin is the base color there but i'm gonna stipple on some um red leather and some orange fire um to start to build up a um rusty kind of look so right some of the paint there and when I say stipple, I'm basically just sort of taking my a big, thick, dry brush, I'm using a round one here, so I can just start to stipple that onto there. The reason we're doing the stippling is so it gives it a bit of texture. Everybody loves that uh, rusty steel texture. And I'm going to run that across. Um, most of the thing. I'm even going to do it along the blade here. But I'm going to leave some of the, um, the tinny tin in the shadows. 
uh, underneath there. So. This is what it would look like um, if the whole thing was rusty. And then I can come back and we can paint some uh, silver stripes in from the edge to, to show where he's actually hit it against uh, other things and where the, the rust would have flaked off and revealed fresh metal underneath. So we'll get that at the back here as well. So I think once we've got this on there with the, uh, with the orange, we'll be able to see whether it should go with orange in the eyes. Um, because it might be a good um, connection to it, or it might be a little bit too much. So, let's go around and hit this. I think in your most recent article in Game Trade Magazine, you talked about the triangle. Right, yep. Uh, colors. Which I feel like the orange eyes might help a little bit with that. Possibly. Like the, the spot color. Yeah. Is the thing that I... Was it... Were they talking about... Yeah, I was talking about spot color in that one. Yeah, you were talking about spot okay. color, but then in one photo you, like, talked about the triangle. Yeah. Around the face. I, th I don't think I've... I haven't done a very good job of um, trying to work on that. Or maybe. I think using the... Having the same colors on the horns and then these strange horns that come down out of his... Um, neck. I wasn't sure if they were hair or they, they had more of the texture like the horns rather than the rest of the hair around it. But putting those in there and having those at the same color helped to do that framing. So yeah, I'll move it there. So you can see the just all of those light areas. Keep the focus on the face there. Yeah, I'm actually, the more I think about it, I think of the, the orange going up to the yellow. Because that yellow will work well against the purple too. So we'll have a lot of saturation on that, uh, that face there. The different spots on those fa that face. But yeah. No, I'd, I'd forgotten which, um, <laughs> which article we were talking about or which one we were up to. I think the next one is, um, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, I, I painted up some the, the aliens and the um, the alien warriors and the face hugger and the eggs from um, aliens. Yeah, from the aliens another glorious day in the core, which is a brilliant segue, if I might say. It is a brilliant segue. I think it's I forgot about that until you said it. Yeah, <laughs> it's super important to, to point out brilliant segues so that they are no longer brilliant. Um, but we do have a giveaway at the moment. Um, so if you go to the Game Trade Media Facebook page, is that right? Uh, it should Maybe. be. Oh, all of the, on all of the uh, socials? Um, you can find a, uh, I think it's a Gleam campaign. For, uh, and you could win a copy of Aliens, Another Glorious Day in the Core, and the um, Aliens uh, accessories, the Hazards and Assets box that I was painting up uh, two weeks ago on the show. So if you would like to win those, jump on that. When does, how long does that run for, Leona? It runs for about another week. About another week? Okay, cool. So it'll be early March that we'll be. Yes, sorry, I was just that. getting the link. Cool. Okay, the other is going to pop it in the chat. Fantastic. That'll be cool. And I think maybe at some point in the future we'll paint up some uh, some alien warriors and some marines, colonial marines, on yes. the show. We can definitely do that. That'd be pretty cool. I mean, I'm partial to painting Firefly first, but <laughs> it's just because I love Firefly. That's cool. We could do that. I need this to dry faster. It's all good. 
Try so. faster, Lava. Try faster. We also have, um, I actually didn't tell Dave and Gretchen this before, but um, Nelson from Mythic Studios, who we had on yep. almost two months ago now, right? Uh, sent me some minis. Oh, cool. Uh, so we can paint some of those. They from are warriors. So we painted up the monsters for the Mythic Americas um, game that's, Ooh. that came out in February. Yep. There's the Wendigo. That is one of them. That uh, Gretchen painted. Uh-huh, yeah. Looks and good. the uh, Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. Crazy rainbow. And so now we have some of the warriors. Oh, awesome. That would be cool. Are they for the uh, those two factions? The, yes. The Aztecs and the... Um... It's actually... I think it's just the Aztecs. Oh, okay. Right. Cool. That'll be cool to check out. And yes, I agree. Forte Forte. They are very cool monsters. You should definitely yeah. check them out. And actually, if you haven't watched the episode where we interview Nelson, you should definitely check it out. <laughs> yeah. It's a really cool episode. I will actually go find that and put it in. Put the link in. Yeah. Because I just think it, he is a really cool person and just talked about the game really well. Yeah, it was, it was definitely great. So, yeah, while, while Gretchen and I were painting those monsters, we were chatting and asking questions of Nelson and the, about the game design for Mythic Americas. Um, it's based on the uh, Warlords of Erewhon um, game from uh, Warlord Games. So, it's definitely cool to, to chat about that. So. This is looking really, this is all, almost looking fiery. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit too over the top. And I'm just going to add, just because it's not that bright in real life, I'm going to add a little bit of um, ivory to the, uh, to the thing for the final stippled highlights. So hopefully you can see the can't see a lot of texture there, but um, the idea of the stippling is to give it that that textured feel. So that's pretty good. If you find, do this and you find that you've um, taken it a little bit too far and you have made it too bright, uh, you can always just go back and do a, a thin glaze or take a thin down some um, charred brown or you can use thin down some uh, brown ink and uh, paint that back in. I think we're looking pretty good there. Okay. And while we've got the... So were you doing rust, or is it supposed to be fiery? Um, I'm doing rust. Okay. It's, it's just, it just looks a bit fiery. I think it's also just comparative to Gretchen. Like, you, right now you have a very similar palette. Yeah. So my brain is just thinking, like, oh, you're going to push it to fiery. Yeah, I'm, I'll probably have to go through and put a glaze on to... Okay. To knock it back. And then once I put some of the um, the silver chips on there, oh, you know, um, it'll definitely yeah. have that bit more of a rusty feel. But I think I'm going to try with the... Doing with the orange eyes. We'll try the orange first and see if it works. But, um, I'm going to be patient and let my stuff dry. That's the hardest bit. Being patient is so difficult. Yeah. It can definitely be tough. But I think it's going to look cool once I get the black on it. Yeah. And I just realized as well, orange glowing eyes is not going to help it separate it from you <laughs> <else> either. <laughs> demons maybe they are just you know it's okay yeah they're buddies 
They're brothers. Brothers. <laughs> they might be. You never know. Let me get the black and I'll start doing the bases of these I while the I wait for this to dry. Demons don't really like to talk about their, like, the whole background. That kind of thing. How's that look? <laughs> How's it look with no definition? But you can see the eyes though, right? <laughs> Sorry, just a little bit of fun. That's okay, I found that I have a singular cat hair in this little tuft of smoke. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's gonna have to stay there. Okay. Also, mm. welcome to Roscoe Hobbies from North Dakota. Oh, cool. Excellent. Thanks for joining us. Dave and Gretchen are painting up some D&D &D monsters. This is their second week on them. Yep. So it's a lot of fine details. And Gretchen is adding smoke details, which he made last week. And I did put glue out there. I don't know if you saw it. I did see the okay. glue, and I thank you for that. <laughs> okay, so I, I talked about um, if this was looking a little bit too fiery, not rusty enough, um, about a, a brown glaze. So I've just thinned down some um, charred brown here. And I can come back and you know, start by painting that into the the recesses here, but because it's nice and thin, you see that going on and adding a little bit of that that shadow back in. Tying it all together. So giving some shadow that you wouldn't you wouldn't expect to see if it was sort of burning fire. As opposed to fire that's gone out. Burning fire. What a fool. <laughs> fool. So. There we go. Wow, that is so much brighter on the camera. Okay. So that dulls it down quite a lot. Yeah, that looks nice. And Rascal said, I'm just getting into painting minis. Ordered oh, cool. the Reaper Core starter set. Cool. Very nice. Cool, yeah. Be a lot of great uh, a lot of great paints in that, for sure. Does that come with minis? The Does core it? the Reaper yeah. core set? Uh, I am not sure. I don't I don't know. Most paint sets, most big paint sets at least, um, don't usually come with minis. Uh, but because Reaper has the Bones line, it's, there's a, always a possibility they might throw a couple in. Oh, it does come three minis. Very cool. Three minis, two brushes, and some paints. Very nice. Well, welcome. welcome We're all about happy little mini painting. Yep. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So how's that? Is that looking more rusty now? Yes. Great. Mission so. accomplished. I can go home. Yep. <laughs> no? Okay. He just gets up and walks out. <laughs> I think um, what I'm going to do now is the, the, I'll probably do the metal chipping on the, the rusty blade um, last. Okay. So I think I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the base. So the base has kind of got these little uh, tiny cobblestones or flagstone kind of approach. Um, and then there's a big, he's sort of dragging his foot forward. 
So there's a big um, stretch where all the, the flagstones have been knocked up around his uh, around his hoof. So I'm gonna get stuck in there. I'm gonna paint, probably paint the base um, brown first. I'll go over the whole thing and then dry brush the uh, cobble slash flagstones with the gray. Just do it nice and simple. Keep it easy because we've only got half an hour left in the show and we need to look at some more minis. <laughs> and we need to look at some more minis. At least I know for sure that my base of flames will be dry by then so I can go back over with the black. Yeah. <laughs> One of the one of the toughest things is is when you glue something on and you know that there's a little um, there's a little gap that you've got to you know touch up, <sighs> but the super glue is there, and you want to paint it, but it's gonna... super glue. And as soon as you get super glue on your bristles, it's done. You just give, give that brush away, <laughs> or throw the brush away. So no, I I think it's going to end up being Ooh. rascal subscribed. So Excellent. we paint every Thursday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. We hang out Eastern Standard Time. Go yep, faster. the only time zone <laughs> that exists. So I'm just checking. No. Um, yeah, so right now we're going to look at some minis. Uh, we actually have a Facebook group um, that people post in. Uh, lots of our good friends. And so we're going to yep. look at uh, some more of them. Excellent. Cool. We have Laura. Oh, a koala. Yeah. With a reaper koala, and that was part of the Australian wire, wildfire fundraiser. Yep. So <laughs> that was, uh, I think they started getting that together in December 2019, and um, they did a few different minis. But uh, yeah, Laura's done a great job here. Um, on this I love one. that choice of yellow. Yeah. The green and the, everything just looks sunny. Well, the, the cool thing with that, the yellow, the, the green and gold mm -hmm. are Australia's, like, colors. So if we're going to do something internationally, Australian, sports, Australian <laughs> sports teams will be wearing um, green sports. and gold. <laughs> That's okay. I like how you're just like, it's green and gold, and in I'm like, Olympics, yeah. <laughs> in the Olympics, they always wear that bright I'm cultured. Yellow. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, uh. yeah it, it'll, be a, it'll be a mix of uh, green and or yellow. Um, you'll have... Mostly green, a little bit of yellow. Mostly yellow, a little bit of green. I don't know why. But uh, Laura's done a great Steve job Irwin there as a on, child. This, uh, <laughs> on this koala, this uh, anthropomorphic koala. But yeah, nice work. Good job, Laura. Oh, some Skaven. Skaven crew done. These minis look very cool. I think Michael's done a great job. I love the, um, the, the fur, like the fur brown. Yeah. Is, is delightfully different from that hairless, fleshy tail, which looks kind of disgusting. Yeah, rat tails are kind of... Yeah. They do what they do. Yeah. I think this one's particularly prehensile and it's holding a knife. <laughs> this tail is going to stab you. But, uh, yeah, I think Michael's done a great job here. They're looking nice and uh, dirty and, and grotty, and you wouldn't want to meet them in a a dark alley at all. Yeah, nice work, Michael. Oh, Richard Tyler has painted more from Black Sight Studios' Don't Look Back range. Ooh. Um, yeah, Black Sight Studios are uh, a couple of guys out of Texas, and um, they do some fantastic laser-cut scenery, and they've got an awesome um, sort of schlock horror game called Don't Look Back. But, uh, yeah, these minis are looking very cool. Particularly love the uh, the aliens, the greys. Mm -hmm. Very nice, and the jack o' lanterns are super cool too. Nice work, Richard. They look great. Ah, uh, we mentioned Roger before. Um, so this is the after the Empire castle pieces in stone, um, which look very cool. Got a nice um, sort of mix of greys in there. There and, was also uh, one with wood. Yep, yeah, he's also painted up uh, wooden forts, but uh, I also like the um, sort of the green uh, moss that uh, Roger's got growing on the side there, the side of the walls. But yeah, looking very cool, Roger. Nice work. Ryan 
Bangkok. This is the, this is the way. Looks definitely cool. I think um, Ryan's done a great job painting these up. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody can notice there, but on that right thigh plate, the Mandalorian um, skull. Uh huh. Looks very cool. Great uh, detail painting there. But yeah, nice work, Ryan. Looks awesome. I'm guessing these were 3D printed minis. Yeah, looking great. Pardon? You think so? Yep. And uh, Seth posted uh, posted this up. Was it this morning? Or uh, maybe? I'm, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, very cool. Warlock Predator. Sometime very recently. Yep. You know, I really like the pastels. I feel like we don't always see a whole lot of pastels. No, no, we don't. I think uh, yeah, I think you're right. It looks uh, it looks very cool. I love the. Um, Love that two-tone look on the fish. And a very nice, or uh, well, the Moloch Predator. Very, very nice job there, Seth. And also on the those teeth, it's very nice crisp painting as well. Button. <laughs> Something seems fishy with this mini. Might be fishy. But uh, yeah, definitely cool, Seth. Nice work. Oh, Sean has painted up some monster hunters from Reaper Bones. Well, they look very cool. I'm a sucker for uh, that, um, like the witch hunter style hat, yeah. the pilgrim hat. Um, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, any minis you see with those, they're gonna be, gonna be very cool. But I think my favorite one of these is the uh, that halfling okay. <laughs> with the uh, the lantern. I just appreciate that the halfling looks very sure of himself. Yep. Yep. He's an he's an angry little dude, I think. Yeah. I like how all of these work well together. Yeah. As a party. Yep. I think that's something that struck out to me. Yep. They definitely look like a team. They do. They do. Smart choice with the brown, kind of using brown as a way to To sort of connect them all. Tie them. Yeah. Yep. No, definitely. I think Sean's done a good job here. Nice work. Very cool. Sleepwalk Air. Just painted up an old master engineer. Yep, this is from the uh, Warhammer Empire range. The, um, so this engineer has, there's somebody holding up, there's something holding up the, uh, sort of his resting post there, <laughs> the bipod. Or the monopod, um, and I know that when I painted up mine many years ago, I kind of painted it in um, like a, in a bronze, so it was like a little statue that was holding it, holding it up. No. Mainly because I didn't want to think of the the engineer resting his foot up on this guy's shoulder as he's trying to hold it steady. Yeah. <laughs> Sleepwalk Air is obviously uh, taking a different uh, different tack to it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, looking very cool. Yes, very grim, very very Warhammer. <laughs> oh, and Stefano has posted up uh, this crazy um, bloated conversion. I wonder if I'm not exactly exactly where this is from, but uh, I think I also posted a um, it was a link to a tutorial yeah. uh, for how to get that um, sort of that rotting flesh kind of look. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. Really nice job. What a smooth blue. Yeah, that, uh, that blue, all, that almost teal, but more blue. It's got a little bit of a, I, I guess with the blue skin and the, um, sort of the bald head and that sort of thing, it's a little bit of the, the Aladdin genie kind of <laughs> feel to it. But um, but yeah, the the Mega Gargan is a is a huge model. It's really quite tall, um, and I think Tony's doing a great job here. Um, so much so much surface area on this model. But I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing this finished up over the next um, 
next few weeks. Not that I, I'm not giving you a deadline, Tony. Just so you know, however long it takes you, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Looking very cool. I shop it, and I love the skull and crossbones on the loincloth. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Nice work. Okay. Excellent. So do you think I'll have time to finish him? I believe in you. We have 18 minutes to go. I don't think I can manage that. We've got the base and the sword. We can do it. A little bit more. Brown I, I believe. You My, believe? Yeah. Thank you. I'm kind of regretting my decision to do tiny little stripes of fire lava color oh, well, burning nice. through. Yeah. <laughs> um, just the second, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> After learning how much time we have left. <laughs> cool. But, you know, precision. It's fine. You'll be fine. You'll be all good. Just gonna throw a little bit of stuff to hold him. Oh, there we go. I'm knocking over all of the paints on the. Uh, Everyone in chat says your eye glow is on point. That's good. I'm happy that's worked out. I think I might go to a white, but it's looking okay. Okay, there we go. So um, I said I was going to do the base first and then come back to the the chipping on the sword, but it, now that I've got some wet um, wet brown on there, I'm going to wait until that dries. So I'm going to hit the edge of the blade with some um, types of silver. So the moment is going to run along kind of randomly. On oh, that edge there. Never know exactly where it'll be hitting. And then some of these raised areas on this little design. So we'll get some, just start to paint those in. So that's where the, um, the rust, this rust forms in layers. So it forms in that top layer. And then as it gets knocked off, it will reveal fresh metal underneath that will then start rusting almost immediately. So, good. there we go. So I think for those fine lines coming off the, um, the edge of the blade, I'm gonna use a, a little bit of a finer brush. This is using a size one brush. My favorite Broken Toad, series three. Oh. On the blade here, it does have some um, some some score marks in it and some, some broken bits there. So I'm just gonna hit those edges, along those lines. Let's there we go. crack a lock in with some black. That's looking really cool, that base. Yeah, I just have to remember what lava looks like. <laughs> you can do it. I think you'll be fine. Leanna is making strange sounds. I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> on behalf of Rascal, thank you. These look yeah. wicked cool, oh. guys. Cool, thank you. And I would agree. I was basically thinking the same thing, and then Rascal typed that. <laughs> That's why I was like, wow. <laughs> All right. So you're saying you're not the only person thinking that they look cool? Correct. That's good. But, like, I think everything you guys paint is cool. 
You know why that is, Leona? Top quality painters. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just kind of an odd angle to be painting at, but it'll show up on the camera. go. Makes kind of a nice nice break from plain, painting uh, blood on blades. Then I got to do quite a bit with my uh, some recent Gene Steel occult minis that I was painting. So Rascal is saying, I hope when I do my first it will look as cool. What tips do you have for someone who's like just starting out in painting? Uh, I think the um, there are a few different tips to um, use, but the first one would be um, take your time. Don't um, don't try and rush anything, uh, and uh, put your use a use a palette. Of some kind, you don't have to use a wet palette, but you can just use a um, like a sheet of plastic or um, something like that. But just use having, having a palette, somewhere where you can put the paint onto it, and then you can use water to change the um, the viscosity of the paint. Being able to control how the paint flows is um, a very important thing. For painting, you don't want it to go on really thick. You don't want it to be too thin because it won't stick onto the miniature. So a lot of that's going to be a little bit of practice for you. Um, so that's one of the one of the important things I think is very definitely using a um, a palette to get that uh, to be able to help you control that the viscosity of the the paint. So that's probably one of the most important things uh, when you look at miniature painting or you listen to people talk about miniature painting you'll hear um, about things like uh, dry brushing uh, washes inks um, over brushing highlighting layering all these sort of words that you'll uh, you'll start to hear uh, the first thing in my mind that's that's one of the most important things for feeling comf uh, comfortable and confident with your painting is um, building up um, is working on the neatness of your uh, of your painting, and what I mean by neatness is where it's kind of you know like sometimes you can think about miniature painting as um, like three dimensional coloring, so you're um, keeping within the lines is that neatness. Um, so wherever you get two two parts of something meet, so like the edge of this um, sort of the the ball at the end of the spiked ball at the end of the weapon there, and the half of the weapon. So actually, I'm not sure if you can zoom in a little bit closer on that, Leona. Cool. So I'm talking about neatness there. You can see that my black does go up to the edge, but it's not particularly thick. It's a little bit thin on that area, so you can see some of that orange showing through. So. One of the things that I would do to make it look neat is go back with the black and paint that carefully along the, the edge there so that that can be nice and, and neat. And when people look at it, they see that there's a the point where the haft ends and the, the hilt starts, I guess. And I can just add a little bit of silver in there. So, um... Yeah, the neatness, neat, neat base coats first up is um, probably the best thing for for helping your confidence and um, and becoming comfortable with painting minis. So that's what I'd focus on first. As you paint more and more, you'll be able to um, get uh, start to work on different things like highlighting and dry brushing and washes and so on. But uh, Betsy says uh, in, in the chat there, uh, I've been painting for a year now. Watching YouTube videos is great, but the only way to get better is by actually painting and getting a feel for it. 
there's a lot of conflicting advice out there. There is no one way to do anything. Yeah. So yeah. like, Bingo. I've only been painting for as long as I've been on the show. I've only been the sh on the show for like, what, two and a half years? Two and a half years, something like that. Yeah, yeah something like that. Um, well, painting minis, I should say. I was, I, I painted uh, traditionally um, beforehand, but I feel like I get the most learning experience when I just experiment. Almost everything on this mini was not previous knowledge. Um, like pretty much everything on this mini was me uh, kind of being like, I wonder if this will work because it technically works when I do it on paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're saying experiment and have fun. Yeah, have fun. Don't be too serious. Yep. Um, it's all for games anyway. Games are supposed to be fun. Yep. So I think, yeah, that's, uh, that's the important thing there. I think, um, yeah, a couple of things there. There's, there's no one way to do it. Um, have fun when you're doing it. Um, yeah. Watch a whole bunch of videos. But uh, as Betsy said, the, the important thing is the practice. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah, take started. your time and enjoy yourself. Yep. I really started painting miniatures in earnest about 30 years ago. So I've had a little bit of, uh, little bit of practice since then. <laughs> Just a bit. But he's looking pretty good. Also, when starting out, paint the deepest areas first and work out. That can <laughs> that be way you don't mess up, so that you don't part. mess up the parts you've already painted. Yep. One of the things, um, one piece of advice you might find out this, I find out in the wild world somewhere, is um, paint uh, painting miniatures like you're dressing the model. Um, so there are painters out there, and there's a uh, famous painter in the UK. In clothes? Um, pardon? Like you're dressing them in clothes? Yeah, yeah. It sort of start. It's it, there's um, the painter I was just about to mention, Kevin Dallymore, um, has been painting for even longer than me. Uh, he starts and basically paints from the inside out. Oh. So the first thing, so from a, you might prime a model black. The first thing he paints is the eyes. Then he paints the skin. Then he paints the first layer of clothing that's, that's against the skin. And then the next layer out and the next. So he works from right inside out. Um, I work from, I paint the largest area on the model first. So like the, First thing I did on this guy was paint the red um, to kind of establish it, and everything else is details. Uh, some people would um, dry brush the whole thing, dry brush all of his fur first, and then paint the red in. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, and it's a lot of it comes down to what you feel most comfortable doing. So those are some... Uh, Piece of those are the pieces of advice I would uh, I would suggest. Rascal was asking, do you always prime the models or can you just paint them? On the show, we always recommend priming. Yeah. Them. The uh, it, a lot of it depends on what you're going to be doing with a model. So a spray primer coat um, helps uh, is going to give a, have a better um, bond to the miniature itself. Uh, so it can help the paint sticking to the miniature. So if you're going to paint a model and then sit it on the shelf and it's not going to be touched at all, you don't need to worry about priming. But if you're going to be handling the model a lot, if you're going to be using it in gaming, um, then you really want to prime it first. Um, I always recommend spray priming. So I usually use a like a rattle can. Um, so a spray primer from Games Workshop or the Army Painter or Vallejo. Um, the uh, there are a lot of people who use um, airbrushing airbrush to prime their models, um, and there are a lot of cool. Vallejo have a fantastic range of spray primers as well. Um, so, yeah, if you are going to be handling the model a lot, 
definitely um, definitely prime it first. You can also hand prime models. Uh, that will just take a little bit longer. But yeah, you can get a, a good sort of base color down first and go from there. By the way, Gretchen, uh, some people in the chat have been commenting about your lava. Looks very cool. Everyone is saying it looks awesome. <laughs> yep, it definitely does. Things I can paint. Lava. Lava. <laughs> <laughs> and this, it, it's another example of um, doing things differently or taking a different approach. Is I would have gone along and painted the cr like those cracked lines first, and then painted, like highlighted them, or, or painted in the the brighter glowing colors. Mm -hmm. So I would have left the black that was on the base there. Whereas you approached it completely differently, which yeah, is flip flopped it. Yeah, just painted lava across the whole thing, and then all the the hot magma. Yeah, the magma. Because in my brain, the lava's there first. <laughs> you were doing the layers. You were building the sandwich. Exactly. Delightful sandwiches. But I, I think that that's that's a just another example of that, of how you can get. Well, obviously, I haven't done it, so you can't see that it's the same effect, but a similar effect. Um, by taking a completely different approach. Two minute warning. Okay. Let's speed it up with this, uh, this base dry brushing. And yes, uh, if you are new to the show, towards the end we get a bit quiet. We do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're super focused and racing to yeah, finish. Yeah, that's okay. Well, we're trying so hard. <laughs> Leona, so take it away. So thank you for everyone who is watching. We're coming towards the end of our show. Uh, Gretchen and Dave may or may not show it on the spinner. It honestly looks really good there. I feel I feel like I'll, I'll definitely have something to put on the spinner. <laughs> No yeah. problem. The spinner is... I mean, if it takes, it a, takes us a couple of minutes extra, we'll be okay, not right? Not perfect. I should set that up. Hmm? Oh, okay. We'll get... But yeah, so uh, we, we uh, film every Thursday. We come here, paint, have a good time, talk about stuff. Our Tyler, thanks for joining. No problem. Said, sorry, I missed some of the show. Great models, yeah. We worked on these models almost a month ago, yep. and um, I was really excited to finish them <laughs> to see how they came out, because I knew that they were going to look really cool. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, Forte. It was fun to have you. Nice hanging out. Super chill. Uh, yeah. We'll see if you guys can see the cat. Oh, no, I got the cat hair out. Yay! <laughs> we need a pun to go out on. Wow, Roger is laying it down some key. We yep. need a pun to, to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, real quick, we're just probably going to... I mean, do you guys want to put them on the spinner? or Yeah, we can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can okay. I can do that. I don't have all the smoke on, but I definitely have two little things of smoke. I can, it just might not look as good on the spinner as it does in... In real life? Uh, in uh, in the camera angle that I already have. Right. Does that make sense? It does. You're saying because it's a different camera and it's a different angle. It's a much better camera. These are much better cameras. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to use the spinner. But. Yeah, so here's Gretchen's. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me... I can probably scoot yep. this. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take pictures. Yep. Nope. There yeah, we go. Right there. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Looking very cool. There he is, Mr. Garistro. I completely missed when you when you painted the um, like the red into his braces there, on his forearms. 
I'm a mystical I'm being. It, it just like I made a comment to you as I was doing it too that I was regretting yeah, that's my a decision. Really cool detail. <laughs> it is cool. Was that when, uh, when we were looking at minis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there we go. Okay. And you're like, we only have 18 minutes left, and I was like, oh man. Oh, that's when you. Were I have regrets. The okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks great. It doesn't have to be like as intense as everything else. It's just that there's a nice subtle little, little detail. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. So yeah, Very I'm cool. I'm happy Ooh. with him. Yeah. Take a nice he little looks picture. Awesome. I might actually just leave the two little tufts of uh of smoke because I think if I start adding all the other stuff, it gets really crowded. Right, and it starts to. A little toupee. His hat. Look at my hat of fire. Right there. I think it would be like, I wish oh, I could just, beard. yeah, I wish I could just trim off his, his, uh, little goatees things and just <laughs> That'd be fantastic. make a little, <laughs> very nice. Uh, awesome job, so. Gretchen. That looks great. Yep. It does look excellent. We'll very jump nice. over to Dave real quick. Nope. Cool. There we go. This is, uh, Baphomet from, uh, Gale Force Nine's D and D range, and uh, yeah, I think he looks quite brutal. I missed. Um, I didn't do the uh, his little bony protuberances on the um, the tail. Let's come back and do that. And I missed doing the tail end as well. But uh, got everything else in there, which is good. He looks great. And his. Uh, I understand the rust now. Shiny chipping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. That brown wash really did help. Yeah, it can just takes it back to that um, that base sort of level. Um, this is probably like this is extreme rust. Obviously, yeah. I probably should have gone with a, a silver first and then just a more subtle rusting. Okay. But uh, cool. Next time round, next time we paint a, a huge cleaver weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Looks <laughs> awesome. I think they're pretty nice. But yeah, I think those, uh, yeah, the, the yellow, orangey yellow eyes look pretty cool. He is screaming at you. They're screaming at each other. <laughs> they're, uh, Leona, you call them brothers? Yes, they're brothers. That seems legit. Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Here, they're, we can, we can. They're brothers. <laughs> yeah. That looks like brothers to me. <laughs> Super intense, cool. But we will take some photos and we'll pop them in the in the group. And I said, by we, I mean Leona will take some awesome photos. Leona will take beautiful photos on a legitimate camera that's not my cell phone. Uh, <laughs> cool. Lovely. Okay. All cool. right. So uh, thank you very much to our sponsor Vallejo today for all of the paints that we used. So many. Oh. I actually only used like, like this many. Oh, okay. I a reasonable a lot amount. I'm greedy. <laughs> <laughs> a reasonable amount of paints. Um, <laughs> but yeah. All right. Do we know what we're painting next next week yet, Leona? Leona wants to paint Firefly, I think. But I, I feel paint. like a lot of people would appreciate it if we painted Firefly. I think. Possibly. I think that's yeah. legit. We should do that. We should do that. Okay. All right. Decided. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, just as a reminder, before we leave, though, um, we are doing the giveaway. We are. Indeed. So, Aliens by Gale Force Nine. Yep. Aliens. Uh, Another glorious day in the core is yes. the name of that game, which is a fantastic name. Beautiful quote from the series. But it's the franchise, the movie. But the make sure you go movie. to, um, I, it's in the Painted Happy Little Minis group and the Game Trade Media group yep. as well. And so. uh, it's on, you'll probably find it on Instagram. Twitter. Probably on Instagram or Twitter. We're everywhere, really. Links in the chat as well. <laughs> there we go. Ha -ha. Link right there. <laughs> Perfect job, Dave. Cool. Um, but yes, if you want to take part in that giveaway, please click the link, find the stuff. Take do part, things. do the things, and be the winner. <laughs> be, be the winner we know you can be. Exactly. And we'll see you next week on Painting Happy Little Minis. Bye-bye. <laughs>